Welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. We are a ministry of the Rock Church and World Outreach Center here in San Bernardino, California. And we are going to be kicking off a series here for you uh, at the Rock Church, a sermon series. And this Rock Life Podcast series is going to supplement. It's going to be an added tool for you to follow along. So make sure you're subscribed. Hit the notification so you know every time we're coming on. But is our goal, our purpose is to equip you as best we can. We want you in church every week throughout this series. But again, we're going to be following up maybe with some questions that you didn't even realize that you had coming out of the sermon series. Leave those in the comments. We're going to do our best. Email the church to follow up with you. Why? Because we don't want to just preach a message. We're not just doing a sermon series just to do it. We really want to equip you. Uh, the series is called Your World Series, Winning the Play-by-Play -play God's Way. Uh, and so what we're going to do is equip you as such. My name is Antonio. I'm one of the pastors here, and I'm here with Pastor Dan. And uh, we are going to do that. Pastor Dan, I have a question for you. What is the idea behind launching the new series, and what can we expect in the series? Well, uh, you know, we're just grateful to be doing what we do here at the Rock Church World Outreach Center. And, and really everything we do is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, like the Bible says. And so the idea behind this series really it, you know, in a year, we can't get through everything, right. you know, and especially when you go line upon line. Uh, for instance, we were doing the book of Acts back in 2020. Yeah. We went through the life of Jesus and story. And, um, you know, we're getting ready to, to launch a new book um, throughout the years. We've done, you know, Colossians, and right. Hebrews, yeah. and different, different books throughout. And so we're going to do that later on in the year. But I, I realized in my prayer time and just thinking about the congregation, it's been a while since yeah. we've done some of these foundational practical life series about things like marriage, parenting, personal finance, yeah. uh, order in the home, uh, even, you know, how many messages do you hear about being single? You right. know, yeah. we've heard of the marriage series, but what about a message on, hey, how do I, how do I keep myself and, and, and what hope does the word give me and, and what does God think about these things right. in life? And so, uh, we really wanted to tackle some of these things, even work and employment and those yeah. sorts of things, because all of us live there, you yeah. know? So what does the Bible have to say, and how do we practically walk that out, you yeah. know, on a day-to-day right. -day basis? And these are big issues, and the Word actually has tons to say I love it. about yeah. it. Not, not a little bit, a lot bit, you know yeah. what I mean? Multiple yeah. times in multiple books from multiple sources throughout the Word, God yeah. has a lot to say about these things. And, you know, we're launching with marriage. Uh, marriage is one of those things that you see in the first two chapters of the Bible. Yeah. You know, it was one of the foundational things of creation that God said it's not good for man to be alone. And, and so shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And so we're going to launch this series talking about marriage. Right. And, uh, and we'll talk about being single, like I said. Yeah. And then we'll launch into those other areas as we go along. But really, this is an area that the devil attacks because he sees it as something that's a picture of Christ in the church. Yeah. Anything he can do to destroy that, he will. Yeah. That's why we see the divorce rate is so high. That's why we see the gender roles being yep. attacked. That's why we see things like, uh, you know, the, the LGBTQ movement. Right. Um, oftentimes you'll see them as militant. Right. And I believe that it is because it's organized and it is a direct attack. It's a concerted attack on something that God instituted that shows his goodness, it mm -hmm. shows a picture of, of him and us. Yep. And uh, and if the devil can frustrate that or tear that to pieces, then he's tearing apart an image of God. That's right. right? That's good. Yeah. So I think the series is scheduled for the next 12, 13 weeks. And yep. like you said, within those weeks of the Your World series, and it's just, that's why it's called that, because it's your world, your our world. individual world, yeah. the things we come across. There's kind of like mini series within that, right? You mentioned Marrieds. There's going to be a finance series. They're going to be work and employment, our health, they're going to cover all those things. Yeah. Uh, so like you said, the first week is the marriage. So you are tuning into the first week of our marriage yeah. one. And then like, like I said, preceding each message, we are going to be gathering here in this format to equip you, pull out the golden nuggets from each of those series. And really, and it's not because the message doesn't stand alone, right. but there's a lot of things that maybe we can do in a conversation that you can't always do within that 35, 40 minutes 100%. On, on a pulpit. And so, again, we do want to equip those of you tuning in with us. And we, uh, we that's like you said, Pastor Dan, that's our job to equip the saints. Yeah. And so the best we can do that, we want 
to do. Let me say this. There's always so much more on any topic than what we can preach in mm. a 35 to 45 minute message yeah. and church service. You know, um, when we tackle a topic like marriage, like I said, multiple sources throughout the word of God, from mm. Genesis all the way through Revelation. Yeah. I mean, the, the Bible really starts and ends with a wedding. Yeah, you no, know, that's it's, good. It's yeah. pretty amazing when you think of it in those terms. But I'm not able to cover those theological concepts yep. in a three-week marriage series. Yeah. Uh, really what we're going to do is we're going to tackle the Eight Commandments to the husband and the Four Commandments to the wife found in Ephesians. And outside of that, there's some very practical things that we might be able to unpack. And in any message, you know, when, when I study, and you know this when mm-hmm. you study, uh, you know, you, there's so much more that's there that you can't include in the message. And yeah. so maybe we can tackle some of those right. asides. That, yes. Like, hey, this was on the, the, the cutting floor. You yeah. Know? Let's, no, let's I'm looking forward to it. Was down there. You know? Yeah, that's going to be. It, it gives us a glimpse, not just into you and your study time, uh, but because it's like, hey, so <clears throat> what, what are we seeing that, like you said, we can add yeah. to our life. We can walk away from. And that's really the reason it's important to get into community because that's why, you know, we have church services, Mm -hmm. but there's also other things. So it's not like we leave these things out of our church life in general. Yeah. Um, But things like this resources uh, that I believe this will be can really help us in living out these things. So I'm looking forward to it, Pastor Dan. Let's get into it. Uh, Thank you for explaining that. Um, and, and, And you really, I think you already touched on it, but explaining the importance of touching some of these things that could be hot topics right. in the church context. You maybe want to delve in a little bit more. Why, why is it important to uh, talk about our world, right, in terms of what we go through when we leave these four walls? Well, there's a lie that the devil would love for people to believe, and that is that the Bible is not relevant to our mm, lives. That's right. Um, if he can get someone to believe that, then Bible reading is going to go down, uh, church attendance will go down, um, and obviously faith. Hmm. And when people can see the Bible as absolutely God's word for them today, now, right? It's one thing to think about, well, that was for David, that was for Moses, that was for Abraham, uh, that was for Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. like, or the apostles. Um, but it's another thing to think that God wants our life here and now to prosper, to be blessed, to succeed in every area. You know, sometimes people think that God doesn't want a Christian successful. Right. He absolutely does. That's why he gave us his word. Yeah. And, you know, Joshua 1.8 talks about, uh, you know, to be strong and to be courage. And then verse number nine comes along and talks about that. Don't let the book of the law depart from your lips. But right. Meditate there in day and night. Yeah. And be careful to observe, to do everything that is written in it. Now, most of the time people stop right there and we think, well, God just wants us to follow a bunch of rules. But there's a reason. And the reason why God gives us instructions for life is because it says for then. In other words, after you've meditated yeah. on the word, you've done the word, then you will make your way prosperous. Now, right. prosperity is just moving forward in life. Yeah. It's not just money in your pocket. A lot of times people think prosperity is just, you know, money. Yeah, right. It's not. It's right. moving forward in life. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are stuck. God doesn't want us stuck. He doesn't want your marriage stuck. Right. He doesn't want your business stuck. He doesn't want your kids stuck. Yeah. Uh, he, he wants singles unstuck, right? Yeah. You, you should not be in ruts of sin or, you know, I, yeah. idleness. Right. Um, there's, there's a lot of ways that the devil would entrap us and mm-hmm. keep us stuck. And yet God wants us to make our way prosperous. Yeah. And he says, and then you'll have good success. Yeah. And the neat thing is, is that success is a Bible word. It's not a buzzword. It's not a, yeah. a leadership expert word or any yeah. of that kind of stuff. These guys are all capitalizing on principles and truths that we see in the Bible that God contained for thousands of years right. now. Yeah. That if we'll just simply listen to God's way of life and do it, and guess what? Prosperity and success will come our way. That's the desire of God. And God is so good and so loving. He wants those things for our lives. So, man, why not talk about them? Especially in a, in a safe context yeah. like church. Well, and I would venture to say that if he didn't really care about them, he wouldn't take the time to put them in his words. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and we see that. And I think that's the thing. For many Christians, maybe they don't realize that these things are in their word. God doesn't care about my work. No, he does. He does. And we're going to look and see in the Word. God doesn't care about these extra things like, sure, okay, maybe he cares about my marriage, maybe. But may, there's obviously these nuances that I would assume people might not think, but God does speak to yeah. them. Yep. And I'm so excited to be able to delve into those and again, further talk about them here in this context as well. Uh, well, Pastor, uh, obviously, um, you know, you've been married for some time now. We're going into uh, now specifically for the marriage series. Uh, you come with over 20 years of marriage yourself, 
And uh, at our church, we've talked about the marriage series or Married's God's Way. You've, you, you, you can find the sermon series. Mm-hmm. Uh, but with, like specifically, you mentioned with the, the laws to the husband and the laws to the wife. Um, so we've taught from this way before. Now, 20 years in, wow. yeah. how have these messages or essentially th- what you're going to be preaching over the next few weeks really shaped your own marriage? Sure. Um, you know, it, it's interesting that you, you asked that question because when uh, Jessica and I got married, we were 21 years old. And, um, you know, I, I had a certain context of marriage. Jessica had a different context um, right. from our, our upbringing. Thankfully, both of our parents were both in love. Uh, both sets of parents stayed together. Mm-hmm. Um, my parents had some rocky times, right. you know, and um, uh, I, I thank God that God uh, took care of them and, and answered our prayers and they stayed together. And so to have two families that had over 40 years of marriage experience, um, you know, just that was a strength to us in our marriage because we knew getting together um, that number one, we weren't dating to mess around. You know, we we had messed around already. We had seen that lacking and didn't want to go down those paths. Uh, We knew that we were serious and that if we were going to date, it wasn't just dating. It was more like courtship. Right. You know what I mean? And so um, we had boundaries. Uh, we we would pray before we left each other every night and made sure that that was the last thing that we did. Right. Because I mean, you start messing yeah. around. <laughs> we got to pray and yeah, repent and yeah, talk to yeah, God about yeah. this, you know. So um, it, it kept us accountable. We had other people that that spoke into our lives and group settings, group dates, things like that that we we did. Uh, we spent a lot of time with my family, with her family. Yeah. And um, you know, a lot of that, and and a lot of our our get-togethers were ministry events and things like that. So it was it was healthy in those terms. You know, and uh, and so coming into the marriage and and then learning these commandments, you know, um, we were we were kids when we got together. You know, the neat thing was going to Bible college, coming back, starting the young adults ministry. And then as we started to pastor uh, and that it's been over 20 years that I've been pastoring now too here at The Rock, um, started as a young adults pastor. But people started, you know, young adults get married. Yeah. So I had to learn these principles to teach others. And in every time I would teach someone else, and any time I'd teach it from the pulpit, my goodness, I would be building myself up. Right. So when we start talking about the commandments to the husband, I'd be like having to do a self-check, you know, like, okay, am I loving my wife as Christ loved the church? Yeah. Am I laying down my life sacrificially? Am I, you know, uh, thinking, living, and operating as one, you know, and all right. the other commands that, right. that come to the husband? I, I had to kind of like stop as I'm saying it to the, and going, okay, am I doing all this? Am I cherishing her? Am I yeah. valuing her yeah. the way that I see what God wants me to in the word? Mm-hmm. And, and in those honest evaluations, I'd have to say, well, no, right. you know, I, I, I'm lacking in this area or, you know, I've been really selfish and I right. need to start laying down my life and, and, uh, you know, or, um, the, the cherishing part, you know, my words have not shown her the value that she has to me. So I need to, I need to speak that more often, yeah. you know, um, not just have that, that man mentality. Well, she knows I love her cause I'm married her, you know, yeah. and it's like, okay, dummy, you right. know, you're going to lose right. that woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And, and I, and I've been able to grow on those things in those areas and a lot of conversations, a lot of working together. Um, you know, uh, the, the areas that I was lacking, obviously, as I would teach those things and examine myself, try and grow in those areas and still growing. Yeah. You know what I mean? 20 yeah. years later, 23 yeah. years later now of a, of a marriage, we got married in 2021 or 2001, sorry. Yeah. 2001. Um, but, uh, but 20 years later, looking at that going, man, I'm, I'm more in love today, right. but I still have a lot further to go. Yep. You know? Yeah. Well, I love that because, you know, even for the person who is not a pastor or teaching this, because you talked about kind of some of the repetition, that doesn't mean that, Again, we're going to hear this from this from the pulpit in this series, but that I can take that and it's it's not a set it aside, right? Like right. so, I'm going to take these commandments and I'm going to do that same thing, essentially that same exercise of the inventory, a regular mm-hmm. inventory of where I'm at, because I know as a husband, I'm often taking inventory about my what my wife's doing and not doing, right? <laughs> but I'm not as often, or yeah. I'm not so much as inclined to do that for myself. Right. Um, And so, and I think that's kind of human nature to, we can pinpoint where everyone else is failing or lacking, but unless we can really delve into or look in the mirror and see where we lack, but that's going to really just benefit us. Cause like you said, as you were getting ready to like, Oh, 
it's easy to tell a potential husband, hey, you got to make sure when you're married, do this. But if, uh, if we're not doing it, you yeah. know, so in that inventory, in the repetition. So when we get these laws in this series, let's make sure that we're revisiting and, and making it a common thing. Even if you have to set an appointment in your phone every three months, go through the messages again yeah. or go through the laws and, I know and do a that, check inventory. I know on their anniversary... They oh, listen yeah. to the series. That's great. Because yeah. every year they want to be refreshed. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and that's not a bad idea. No, that now, is. As a pastor, I get to teach it and I get to work with couples. Right. So I know I'm yeah. going to be refreshed in it. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, you know, outside of that, there's times where throughout the year I'll, I'll check myself. And most of the time that's like a birthday or an anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because like, whoa, am I doing it? I, I yeah. Make sure it's special right yeah. now. You know? No, that, that's, but, that's great. But beyond that, you know, um, when I see my wife down or hurting or having a hard time or going through some challenge, you know, and, and definitely as we've seen over the years, life changes, kids, right. homes, yeah. you know, our work, uh, the different roles we've taken over the years. And now the changes in life as kids are starting to leave, yeah. drive, yeah. get independent, things like that. We've had to look at one another and say, we better like each other because mm-hmm. when these kids are gone, yeah. you know, yeah. it's just us. No, that, that's great, Pastor. Yeah. Um, so what are some common challenges or misconceptions that you've observed regarding marriage within the congregation or uh, meaning what, what are we getting right or where are we missing it from maybe what where the church is telling us, you know, there's a lot of content out like this or there, you know, there's sermon yeah. series and a lot of things are, you know, hitting right now topics or buttons. Where, where would you say that we that we're getting it right or where are we maybe not quite getting enough into it? I think um, uh, it's a great question, and where are we getting it right is, is uh, you know, a, a brilliant statement because I think that's where a lot of times people will overlook. They mm-hmm. go straight to the negative. This yeah. is what is wrong with marriage in the church. But where are we getting right? If you look statistically, people who are believers yes. that are married actually stay married longer than people in the world yeah. and have a lower divorce rate than yeah. people in the world. Used to be, you hear people preach all the time, the divorce rate's the same as in the churches in right. the world. It's not true. Right. Okay. Recent statistics and things that people have been studying have found that when people have faith, mm-hmm. that they're going to be more likely to be happier in marriage, yeah. have a longer marriage, and a lower divorce rate. Yeah. We're getting it right. This is God's institution. Right. And I'm so happy to see these stats coming out because it almost feels like we've been browbeat with marriage in the church that, A, there's no difference and you're so wrong. No, it's actually right. It's yeah. working Yeah, because it's God's design. Um, and with that, uh, one of the things that I see personally in, in young couples especially and even in, in married couples that are coming in getting saved and trying to figure out what a godly marriage looks like, one of the things that I see them getting right personally on, on that level. So, yeah. so we've gone from the, like the big church now to our church and, yeah. and people that we're working with on an individual level is that they're actually hungry to find out about marriage. Yeah, This is a neat thing because that hunger will produce in them the drive and desire to go into, okay, let's get into the Word. Let's yeah. Let's talk about this. Let's talk to a pastor. Let's find out what we can do to to enhance our marriage or to make our marriage work, you know? And I think that's so good. The Bible says, seek and you'll find, ask and you'll be yeah. given, right? Yeah. Knock and the door will be opened. The, these are beautiful invitations for married couples to seek out, hey, what yeah. does a godly marriage look like? How can we be fulfilled in marriage? Yeah. Pastor Jim used to say, there's nothing better than a good marriage, nothing bad, worse than a bad <laughs> marriage, right? Right. Yeah. And he knew from experience he was divorced three times. He was never the divorcer. He was the right. divorcee. Right? Yeah, they all yeah, left him. yeah. Uh, but but uh, you know, coming from a man who knows that pain and heartbreak, to say something like that because him and Pastor Deborah had forty five years of a great marriage. Right. You know. Yeah. And so to see that example ahead of us, it, it it's kind of spurs us to say, okay, well then, if there's nothing better than a good marriage, how do I have that marriage? Yeah. Yeah. And our people, man, they really want to know, mm-hmm. and they've got the most sincere and tender hearts. Now. On the flip side, where are we getting it wrong? Yeah, I think that uh, you know there are worldly views that people bring into marriage. Mm-hmm. What do mm-hmm. I mean by that? Uh, a lot of, especially young husbands, and you know, I don't fault them for this. I, I know that I probably have this thought in my mind. A lot of times, it centers in on the physical mm-hmm. and on the sexual relationship. Yeah, beautiful part of marriage. Right, should be enjoyed in marriage. Yeah, right. 
God gave that as a gift to us, and there is pleasure that's that's received from that. And it's something that only the married couple can share, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No one else can. No one else should share it. Right. You right. know, uh, the Bible's clear: the marriage bed is undefiled. Yeah. You know, and so we don't bring anything or anyone else into that marriage bed. That's between a man right. and a wife. Right. Right. So. Uh, so where are we getting it wrong? A lot of times, these young couples, and especially the men, I'll say this, they think it's just going to be every day, right. some all day, you right. know, and, right. and we have this Hollywood mentality that there's going to be, you know, slamming doors and right. throwing yeah. people and yeah, yeah. clearing tables. And, yeah. and it's like, it's not it, you right. know? Right. <laughs> that is the world's view, and right. it looks exciting, but right. really... Um, Sorry, R&B fans, right? Yeah, man, I, I tell you. And it's like, yeah, don't listen to music. Yeah. Don't listen to that stuff. You'll, you'll get the wrong idea. Yeah. Um, there, there's something to be said. I, I think it was Rick Warren uh, talked about sex with one woman as like a master violinist, right. you know, right. playing the same violin yeah. and, and mastering his craft over the years. Yeah. I tell you, the relationship gets better over time. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, you know... For us to think that we're going to have that Hollywood romance right away, and that's awkward. Right. It's at times painful. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, it's it's not what you expected. Yeah. Then there comes a time where you know uh, one of the partners might say, "I'm just not feeling it," right, or right. their their feelings are hurt because right. of something, and they're they're not wanting to go there. Um, you know, and 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 the the unique makeup of men and women that can cause strain in the marriage and problems in the marriage. Mm-hmm. Big three that I oftentimes. Uh, when I counsel people on marriage, it's usually sexual intimacy, right. it's finances, right. and it's the, the future, the direction, and then my wife would add the in-laws, you right. know, so, <laughs> which, which is yeah. a big deal. You yeah, know, of course. You're marrying a family. So, yeah, yeah I, th- I think those are areas that if, if, if I would say the big three for what I've encountered yeah. and, and then number four that my wife would add, those are the areas that a lot of times we do get it wrong is, is you know, that sexual Im- intimacy, finances for sure. You know, people have differing views or they want to separate finances. And it's like, guys, yeah. you're married. This right. is not your money and my money. Yeah. It, everything's ours, you know, right. and that's covenant, right? Everything is shared. Uh, and in the future, what is the direction? Where are we going? What are we doing? Uh, men need to lead. Yeah. And if men aren't leading, women aren't following. They're not, yeah. the, your roles are off. And we'll yeah. discuss that at length in the series. And then, like I said, my wife would add the, the, the in-laws because family dynamics do change things. Right. And over the years, that can take a toll on a marriage or cause strain in the marriage. Right. Yeah, the, the, and a lot of that will kind of go back down to communication because I'm sure, sure you know, it, it's, there's oftentimes one person doesn't even have, a, doesn't even know something's challenged. And yeah. that's when you hear about, I was blindsided by the divorce like because they had, there was not a communication. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea you were feeling this way. Mm-hmm. And so I, I can understand that. Uh, well, Pastor, now I'm having a great time so far. I know we don't want to uh, go too much longer. I have a couple more questions that yeah. I think we're going to pull some cool things out of. But uh, being that this conversation, again, is supplemental to the sermon, what would you add or further? And I know that we, when we go into the messages... Um, and this is the exciting part because we, we talked about in preparation yeah. uh, for this, that now you get to have, knowing that you're going to be recording this, when you're kind of prepping and you're going to know what you're going to maybe get to say from the, the pulpit and, and the message, and then, but maybe, hey, I'll get to delve in a little bit more yeah. here. So as the weeks go on, I'll be looking forward to kind of getting some of those insights that yeah. didn't maybe yeah. make the cut, not because they weren't important, uh, but just because for time's sake and, yeah. and so on, but uh, we'll be looking forward and I'll be f- sure to follow up with the, I that question. I think especially these, these couple of weeks because um, most of the time we we do a three-point sermon, you know, and, right. and try and have some content and things like that and uh, a lot of stories. We're adding, you know, just because it's eight commandments to the yeah. wife and four yeah. commandments to the wife, we're going to do four, four, and four. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're really going to be packing some some more in. So we might have to reduce, but yeah, I mean, I think if uh, if I if I have a story that I, I skip, yeah, uh, even sometimes I'll say things on one of the services that I don't say all three services, so we might be able to recap that. Yeah, that's cool. You know, um, I, I had a buddy that just texted me last night about Easter weekend, and I went on a rant. I don't even remember why now, but I started <laughs> talking about defunding the police. Oh yeah, that was third the second service. Right, second service. Yeah, so. That's the only one I said that in. <laughs> I did not say that. Yeah, yeah. I did tell him to put that one online. So yeah, we'll yeah. See if we get any uh, nasty emails. But, yeah. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, if there's something like that, I think right. we can probably draw that out. And, yeah. um, you know, definitely we're up there declaring the word 
the will and the counsel of God. Yeah. And, and in many senses of it, it is prophetic mm-hmm. in the sense that we're Absolutely. prophesying. We're speaking forth the goodness of God and declaring yeah. what His Word is. And so with that, uh, the prophetic voice to a congregation, as the congregation changes service per service, the Spirit of God will draw out truths that yeah. someone or, or a group of people in that service need to hear. And so, um, you know, that's why it's unique in those expressions. Yeah, that's fun. So, you know, hopefully we'll, uh, you know, have that same spirit here and, and allow God to kind of move in in some of those areas and, and yeah. some of those things out. Well, if you could kind of just quickly have some advice or tips in maintaining a healthy marriage within the modern context, because, again, I know that you know, it's like, well, in the modern world, this is the modern family. Yeah. This is yeah. modern times. In some sense, we know God doesn't change. But our unique approaches to how we are living this out, yeah. like you said, there are times and seasons, and some of our times and seasons have a lot to do with outside influence. Yeah. Um, so if you could take that into consideration, um, and I'm sure, and maybe that's the question as I adjust. Yeah. Um, it, it, because like you said, we've done this, a marriage series before where we're touching really the same topics. Is it the same marriage series? Absolutely. Yes and no, I'd yeah, say, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes and yeah. no, because we're going to be getting that. So maybe maybe that's the question. How, how will this be different from other marriage series or as yeah. we go into it more? Well, you know, obviously um, I'm going to be different. Right. Pastor Jessica's going to be different. We've right. grown like you. You kind of breached that at the beginning. Uh, after experience and time and wisdom and thought and all the things that God does in you, you grow. Yeah. And when you minister, you minister from a different place. You know, the uh, the messages that I preached 20 years ago are not the messages I'm preaching now. Right. You know, and there's there's a, a grace on me. There's a wisdom uh, of experience and years, as well as a depth of, of the study of the word that I've been able to have. You know, yeah. even 10 years ago, I didn't have the decade that's behind me now yeah. with the experiences I've had now. So, you know, definitely I'll be able to speak from a different place. Yeah. Um, you know, same thing with parenting. Uh, the, probably the last time I did a parenting series, um, you know, I didn't have a, a, a child that had moved out of the house. That's right. You know, yeah. and so this is, I'm in, I'm in a new season. So yeah, yeah I'm going to be different yeah. and be able to speak more to some areas that I've, I've experienced. Um, the, the other factor is that the congregation is going to be different. They've grown. Yeah. Some are new. Uh, some have no context. Some have great context, that sort of a thing. And so, like we talked about the prophetic, yeah. um, that God will draw out certain things. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if I could speak to what you're, you're talking about as far as the modern context and how we're speaking to marriage now, um, like we had said, yeah, in some ways it'll be different because of those factors that we just described. But in many ways, uh, the Word of God is amazing in the sense that it's timeless. Um, I, I would say it in, in, in this way, it's, it's both fundamental and elemental. Mm. In, in other words, there are elements that even though we can take those same elements that are on the earth and create something that we would say is new, oh, there's a new phone, there's yeah. a new car, there's yeah. a new this or that, right? New materials that they're building houses with. It, it, it all is ancient, right? Yeah. It, it all was sitting on this earth, yeah. and all we did was we just put it together a certain way. And I think the Word of God is is elemental in the fact that, like we said, marriage is from the very beginning. Right. First two chapters of the Bible, and we're introduced to marriage, and yeah. there's a wedding that takes place. Yeah. So that's one of those uh, those elemental truths. It's also foundational in the sense that God builds the understanding of Christ in the church on this truth. Right, Christ is is the only foundation that can be laid, and He is the bridegroom. Right, right. That's awesome, yeah. He's the husband, and that's why we're launching this with the husband. Right, because man was made first, yes, but Christ was the is the firstborn over all creation. Yeah, and, and if we're going to really understand Christ, we need to understand the husband. We need to understand his role. We need to understand his sacrifice, but also his leadership. Right, his love and his laying down of his life. How much he cherishes the church. And, and, and how he nourishes the church, all those things so that we can understand, okay, here's Christ, but then also he's our example for marriage. Right. As the husband, as the, the, the even men. I mean, just this is a man's message. Whether you're married or not, yeah. you're going to learn how to be a man by looking at a husband and a father, right? Mm-hmm. Those, are, those are things that in our society that are lacking, and it's important that we teach the foundation and, and the elementary things, the ABCs, if you will, 
that way we can build into, okay, so you're a single man. Well, the fact that you know what a husband and a father looks like, you know what a man looks like. Yeah, no, that's good. Married or not. Right. You know what I mean? And, and then the same thing for wives. When, when we look at that husband and father role, then we understand the role of the wife. Yeah. Not that she's any less than a man or, you know, to be put down or dominated, those things. No, she's... She's actually someone who comes alongside and is and is a go getter. She makes things happen. Right. She carries the vision. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and just like the women carry the child, right? That was something that was given by the man, not to, you know, get gross or anything like that. Obviously maturity comes in. Yeah. But men are supposed to give the vision and right. women carry the vision and then they they take it on as their own and then yeah. they produce it, right? That's right. E everything speaks, even the natural speaks. And so women are absolutely amazing. Yeah. And I believe that they're foundational to the plan of God because God gives us the vision and then we birth that into the yeah. earth, right? We make that happen. Yeah. Same thing with a woman. Women are, are strong in ways that men don't even understand or know. And yeah. it's like, man, we needed that, but we didn't know we needed it. Yeah. But God knew. And that's why he said, hey, there's not a helper comparable to him. Yeah. Women are actually helpers comparable to us. Now we understand physically. They're twice removed from the earth. Yeah. We're, we're made out of dirt. They're right. made out of the, the right. side of man, right? So yeah. they're softer. They're, yeah. they're, they're not as strong physically, um, but that doesn't make them any less in the kingdom. They're right. vitally important and That's have right. equal position That's and right. roles in the kingdom. And yeah. so, um, you know, when we see the husband and father, when we see the wife, well, we start to understand women's roles and even a single woman yeah. can understand in response to her place in the kingdom of God and the plan of God on the earth that yeah. she still carries God's vision and can produce and yeah. make things happen. And that's so beautiful, you know? Yeah. And then that goes into every other area. Then our work ethic will come into play and our mm -hmm. parenting and all the other things in this series, our stewardship, you know, of yeah. resources and finances and all those things that we're going to discuss, even our health, physical bodies. How do we yeah. take care of this temple of God? Yeah. All of that will come into play. So I'm excited. I, I think this is going to be a beautiful thing for our church. Yeah. I think it's going to be um, one of those kind of landmark things that people say, man, remember when? Yes. You know, and it'll frame their future as we go into, yeah. uh, you know, the next book or whatever, wherever God leads us in the future. Well, you know, it made me think of a couple of things because you had talked about how, you know, the last time you taught it, it you were in a different place. And also there... And, and you also mentioned people in the congregation, for, for example, people who were single the last time yeah. heard it as a single person. Now they're going to hear it as a married person. If they're married now, it, it, it changes the context. And that's mm -hmm. what I love about this ministry, this house, um, is because we teach unapologetically from the Word of God. And there are going to be people that it stings at the time. Yeah. Uh, but then, then you're like, oh, I, I appreciate it that you said it that way. Right. I think I saw a statistic or you know, you know, it Google everything on Google is ninety percent accurate, yeah. or something like that. But it Maybe. was something. <laughs> it was something like uh, at thirteen, the uh, 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 it might have just been for boys, but like a, a a boy's brain turns off to what their parents are gonna say, and then all of a sudden, like at twenty three, it turns back on and goes, oh, everything my parents said makes sense now, yeah. right? It's like went from my parents know nothing to, oh, my parents actually know everything. And I, it's in, in the same way, the Word of God, I feel like, does that for us, yeah. where we know better, and then after a certain time on earth, in the world, we go, oh, wait. And that's what I love about un unapologetically preaching the Word of God, is because whether I was in this season when I first heard it, now I'm going, oh, my gosh, when did the Bible start saying that? Oh, it's been saying that. <laughs> it's been saying it for millennia, yeah. And the other thing I thought about was, uh, you know, I think, you know, you talked about some of the roles for women. And again, I appreciate about this house and how we understand and see the word accurately as it pertains to women. Because some people say, oh, the Bible's misogynistic or the church is, you know, yeah. and actually quite the contrary. Uh, yeah. Jesus celebrates femininity right. and yeah. womanhood. And yeah. we see that in the scripture. And so when we talk about roles, they're not as much as subversive as much as how they both tell the story of God yeah. and, and how we equate that. So when we get into those things, I think that's going to be really cool for a lot of people. And we've heard the testimonies of uh, women feeling empowered by yeah. understanding and unpacking these truths. And not that submission is a lower position, but actually a powerful position it for is. them uh, because there's that protection. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's really cool. And I, I love getting into these truths because we get to debunk some of the I don't know, misteachings or misunderstandings yeah, that yeah. mostly society has painted on the church. I don't want to say, right. you know, point at other 
streams of Christianity as much as just this is the rap we get, unfortunately. And, and I think that's part of the signs of the times is that, you know, the the world is trying to meddle in things that they have no business in. Right. You right. know, and, and that's where the Bible says to keep oneself unspotted from the world. That especially in marriage, especially in biblical manhood and yeah. biblical femininity, um, if we can keep ourselves in the pure truth of God's word rather than the stain of the world and, and what they're, they're saying about it. I think that it's going to empower, it's going to bless. And, and you know, when we do things God's way, things just work, Yeah. right? There's no greater fulfillment than doing the will of God because now the pleasure of God's on it. Yeah. And whatever God is pleased with, his presence, his power is available too, and will make things work, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's why I think the Your World series, you know, so focuses on God's way of life. You know, uh, uh, the, the way winning, you know, play yeah. by play, yeah. win God's way, yeah. right? That's right. the that yeah. whole tagline. Yeah. It's the play by play. Yeah. Manhood, marriage, right. femininity, uh, you know, singlehood, yeah. business, all that. Play by play, you know? Mm -hmm. And as we do things God's way, we're going to win and, like we started with, succeed. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I love it. I, I have one more question, but before I do that, Pastor Dan, I want to have this segment. Uh, because Pastor Dan, you are human. Yes, you are a pastor. Yes, we love you. You're a spiritual authority, but you are human. And I know Pastor Jess would be the first one to shout yes, me down. Amen, yeah. But I, what what's maybe a husband fail? Oh gosh. Um, that or like you know uh, one of those things that you wish you could reel back in uh, uh, that that just may either happen recently or that stands out as just like a, oh man, this is. Uh, that was that was a that was. You know, I wish I had to reach further back <laughs> for this. But yesterday, okay, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> I was uh, on the phone with uh, Jessica, and uh, we were, you know, you know, it's it, Wednesday is our first day back in the office, yeah. getting back into work, and um, you know, there've been some personal things with our family going on recently, and so it's it's trying to get back into the swing mm -hmm. of things and, and expectations of the day, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, I had a morning where, um, you know, we had a, a long conversation, so I didn't get into the word yet. Yeah. Hadn't really had my prayer time with yeah. Jesus yet. And, um, you know, I don't know about you all watching, but I need Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, uh, you know, we were we were going about some things. So she ran over to her mom's house to help her out and take care of some things. But she had forgotten some things here at, the, yeah. at our house. And so she calls me and can you make me a breakfast smoothie? And I want these items. And so as she's listening to these things off, I said, honey, I need you to hold on because I got to write this down. I will yeah. not remember all the things that you yeah. need and, and that sort of thing. So I start writing things down and then, okay, and then can you get my mom this? Yes. Okay, let me write that down. And yeah. then, oh, um, by the way, in the smoothie, and so we're back to the smoothie and then, oh, yeah, and then I need this. Can you make sure to get this? And she used a different term. Yeah. For, for something and I'm going, okay, so where is that at? It's yeah. Well, it's, it's right where it always is. And I'm yeah. like, well, I don't know where that always <laughs> is, you know? And so as we're going, it's just like this rising tension on the inside of me and yeah. I'm getting annoyed and I'm okay can, can you just say that again and then she's asking me questions about my day and I'm going well honey I'm going to work today yeah you know I've got to make sure these things are being taken care of and it's just rising and so then later on she's bouncing back oh by the way this in the smoothie and that here and, <laughs> and this is what this is and then I'm going oh that's what that is well you should have said that you know yeah. should, should have led with that you know not <laughs> Now I get it. I know exactly yeah. where that is, you know. And so we're going back and forth. And then she asked me the same question about my day. And I'm going, honey, let me say it again. Yeah. You know, and now I'm being rude. Yeah. And so I, I said it very rude. Well, let me say it again. Yeah. And, and I said it again. I said, if you need me to say it one more time, I will, <laughs> you know. Total jerk. Total yeah, yeah, jerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right at that moment, the phone cuts off. <laughs> so it makes it look like it you hung like, up. Honey, are you there? Yeah. Hello. Like, Hello. No. You know? And I'm like, oh gosh. I don't even I don't even get the chance to yeah. say that was rude. I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah. I had to wait until yeah. I like went and made the smoothie, got all the stuff she wanted, picked up the thing for her mom, yeah. and drove it over to where she was yeah. to be able and thankfully you know, uh, we apologized yeah. and, and uh, you know, I said, I'm so sorry. We kissed and made up and her mom sees us and she goes, oh, you guys are so in love. And we're like, <laughs> you don't realize that we're both making up right now because we're being jerks, you know? So yeah, I wish yeah. I had to reach for the back, but that was yesterday. That's funny. And, and I love how it's like cuts off right at the time. Oh, right. It makes it look like you're just hanging up or. Yeah, or that's, she hung up. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was totally, you know, the cellular network or whatever. Yeah. But, that's funny. Crazy, yeah. Well, so you are human, Pastor Dan. Yeah. You, 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 need, you need this 
Just like we all do, I huh? Do. I do. <laughs> I'm preaching to myself. So last question, Pastor Dan, and it's not for right now, but it's as you prepare, I want you to think about this. But what's the mic drop moment that might have just gone over our heads or that, in other words, what's like, man, I want you to get this. But if we're not careful, it, it, it could just go over our, over our heads in this message. So yeah. think about that. We'll be following up next time. And again, for you all tuning in, we want to thank you again for tuning in. Hey, some things you can help us to do is spread the word. Let somebody know. Like I said, subscribe. This is equipping you. We, we want to go into the messages and answer some of your questions. So again, ways that you connect. Maybe you're having some challenges. Call the church offices. Email us. Our prayer, especially if this is your house, we're your pastors. We want to do be, be in there with you. We have spiritual guidance. There's ways that we can help you further. So connect. Email us. Ask your questions. We'd love to shout you out. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you again, Pastor Dan. Yeah. And we'll see you all. God bless you.